Hi, my name is Brenda Romero, and I am Game Director of Empire of Sin. And thank you so much for joining us. I am TJ Denzer, news editor for Shack News, joined today by my, uh, my associate Greg Berg, video producer for Shack News. And we are here to talk all about Empire of Sin. So, Brenda, I played this game thoroughly. I reviewed it for Shack News. I gotta ask, like, right off the bat, there are so many things going on in this game. Like there is, I, I, I feel uh, I feel the civilization vibes from like all the factions. I feel like sim business tycoon vibes from like the actual overworld management of business and all that. I feel XCOM vibes. How did you approach like putting all these systems together and where did you find like the limitations on like where do we stop and how far do we want to go? <laughs> Well, I mean, I would say like our ambitions with this game are, were and are pretty big. Um, you know, when you think about a criminal empire, just from a pure system point of view, there are all those elements to it. Um, you're, you know, you're, it's not just you as a as lone person trying to deal with this illegal thing, right? In this case, we're talking Prohibition Air Chicago, you've got Capone and you've got everybody else there. So, uh, so it's not just you, so you've got to deal with all these other leaders. So absolutely, there's your civilization vibe. They tend not to deal with each other in nice ways. Um, and we really, just beca because of the way the world looks, we really wanted a turn-based tactical combat. Um, and that meant also, as a boss, you are dealing with a crew. You have to put a crew together. When you just roll in, you're dealing with nobodies. Um, but then the more prominent you become, the more prominent gangsters want to work with you. So there's that whole crew management aspect of it as well. Um, and then you are trying to build an empire. So there's a lot there. I guess what we tried to do was to get to just to get the, the I, I'll say the synergy of all those things together, get all those things working so that it felt like you were a boss. It felt like you could take over that criminal empire. Um, but yeah, I mean, the, 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 our ambitions are, are, are big with the game. I can say that. For sure. And like speaking to that element of like historical figures, you do have, obviously like Capone was a central figure of, of Chicago prohibition, but you also had like, rivals like uh his uh his rival dion uh oh dino banyan yeah dino banyan you had yeah. uh people that would eventually become his associates like frank reagan um mm -hmm. and then you have some more obscure folks like i don't know that the average person knows too much about daniel jack daniel mckee jackson but like he was a figure in there and like how did oh, you absolutely how, how did you choose like which ones you wanted to like put as central figures of factions in this game? Well, first of all, I mean, with Daniel McKee Jackson, he's unbearably cool, right? Like the thing we, we, he was hard. He would have been impossible not to choose. I mean, here is a gangster who can take you out and then dispose of your body. He's an undertaker. For the, if you haven't played the game, Daniel McKee Jackson was a real life gangster who was also owned a funeral parlor. And um, so that's what he did. So he, he was just, that background was too good to ignore. So what we did, and we actually had a guy, Darius Monks, he was on our design team, and his whole job was to research and just to pull up all kinds of different figures that existed at the time. I mean, Capone is one of those pe pe people who is, he's larger than life. When anybody thinks about Chicago Prohibition, that's the person they think about, but there were loads of other characters. So we wanted to make sure that we had um, a good cast of bosses and then also a good cast of gangsters. Um, but the, the bosses we wanted, um, we wanted a mix of different characters from, um, like, I also liked, uh, I also liked Stephanie uh, St. Clair. She comes from New York. Um, I liked that she was a card shark. We wanted some, a diversity of interests among the characters, like Dean O'Banion will have nothing to do with brothels. Elvira Duarte, on the other hand, that's her business and that's what she wants to do. Um, so, uh, so it was just making sure that we had a good mix, really so that the player had a lot to choose from. And uh, that's an interesting topic of note right there, Elvira Duarte. Uh, <laughs> actually related to John Romero, uh, what was it like like delving deep into that history and, and realizing Elvira as like a full-fledged character in this game? 
Well, so John, John's family, I mean, I think a lot of people, well, a lot of people, especially in games, right? Like they, especially for Shaq News, would know him from Doom and Quake. Um, but John's family, he has an incredibly colorful background in his family, far more than really colorful background. Um, so I, I knew about, uh, his family would call her Mama Elvira. And she, uh, she was in, in Nogales, she was a madam, she ran brothels. Uh, she had a whole empire going. And eventually, Elvira, uh, she wins the lottery. Um, and so she decides at that point to turn, she, she's gonna go clean, so to speak. Um, and she sold all her businesses and used some of the money to build a, a chapel across the way from her house, which is still there. Um, you know, I don't know whether she was trying to, you know, pray away the sins that she had committed in her empire, but, um, but yeah, so that was his, it, it was, the more we learned about her by talking to some of John's older relatives, um, the more fascinating she became. Like she apparently adopted, or, you know, like she was, she would take in pretty much anybody's kids. She had a real soft spot. So she just kept building onto her house. Um, at one point in time, she had, uh, there was some medical issue and she deeply believed that rattlesnake meat was the solution for it. And so she was eating that, but yeah, and crazy, you know, incredibly colorful. Um, and it's great that she's in the game. Like I love, I love the fact that one of the, one of the people that you can play is a 70 year old woman. I think that's great. Who's using this devil's breath ability that is also based on something that is factual as well. So yeah, that is another like majorly interesting part of this game when it comes to each of these uh, leaders is that they all have a very, very, very different style when it comes to them in both in, in combat in in business bonuses and in, and in diplomacy. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, like McKee, he, he, he was famous for casinos. Like he ran casinos mm -hmm. in addition to his, in, in addition to his, uh, business as an undertaker. And so he gets bonuses for using casinos. Whereas like a person like Capone, who was heavily in the, the booze trade, gets bonuses on his breweries and, and speakeasies. And I think it's interesting to see like how, how, how did you approach like taking the 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 factors of each of these people, like their histories, and implementing them into like the mechanics of their gameplay? Well, yeah. Um, so I won't. So Ian O'Neill is the combat designer. So he's really the guy who came up with all those abilities, and he did a lot of research into them, um, and he wanted them to to feel special and unique to each boss. Um, and they certainly do, like Daniel McKee Jackson's Last Rites is incredible. Um, every boss that I have so far played, right now I've, I've been playing a lot of Frank Reagan actually, just because I love his VO work. Um, but every boss that I play, I become convinced that that is the boss that is the best boss. And I know I've been convinced of this several times, so I know that can't possibly be accurate across the board. Um, but he, so the combat stuff, the combat design for specifically the abilities, that's Ian O'Neill. And that was a lot of research and also a lot of fun. Like he wanted, he wanted you to feel like a boss when you did that, that you had this incredibly special thing. Now, mind you, it's also kind of a tactical decision because the more you play, the more you get to know the other bosses and the less you think like, do I want to go up against that? Like I hate going up against Cy Wing Mach because of his ability. I just find it so, so hard to fight around that. Um, but the other ones, history, history actually made the choices pretty easy. So they're, they have their diplomatic bonus. So a lot of them, those are real, you know, those are real bonuses based on alliances people had back at the, back in the, in, in the twenties. And then, um, the others, like for their, for the empire bonus, each boss gets two empire bonuses and where they are, where it's a factual boss, we took those empire bonuses from the real interest where it is a fictional boss we are making sure that we are spreading you know spreading things around so that different bosses have different strengths in different areas which in fact if you if you have the center if you take a look at the synergies so the synergies is in the empire section of the game and um if you have if you end up taking a look at your bonuses thinking of working with other bosses that have similar or can give you similar areas that you may not have strengths that they can up those areas then you take that into factor into account sorry with your synergies you can actually get a lot of mileage out of that sort of stuff to make yourself um, a good chunk of change 
There's also just like the fact that like some of these bosses are clearly better built for combat where some of them are better built for business. Like I love Mabel Riley's uh, chain shot. You give her a rifle and chain a bullet between three enemies long distance. It's just so cool to me. It is, but like, yeah. but I, but I absolutely cannot deny the 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 fun of playing as Joseph Saltis and just having your speakeasies already start on level two on all their upgrades. Oh, I it's know it. like I I really feel like the characters. Like, some of them are definitely awesome in combat, where some of them are just built from the beginning to really handle business well in this game. I do want to ask, like, one thing that, like, is kind of surprising in this game, you don't see in a lot of strategy games, is the stories. Like, every single gang leader has a faction story that sort of, like, in addition to trying to take over Chicago, they all have their own business and troubles that they're trying to get through. Uh, Mabel Riley, obviously, her husband has died in a car bomb leading up to her taking over her gang. So you've got the, uh, the elements of her gang that feel like she did it, as well as her trying mm -hmm. to figure out who actually did it and reign in the rogue elements. And I gotta ask, like, how was it designing each of these stories alongside the major campaign of the game? Well, the, the interesting thing is like way back, uh, way back in the very early development of Empire Sin, um, Paradox was fantastic. I, I like to get games in UR testing, user research as soon as possible, just, you know, to try to see how do they feel about this? Is there something we, where we could be doing better? Is there something we're missing? And players really, we had, you know, we had these bosses, players really wanted the stories. They really wanted to know more about them, especially because they, especially if they're history buffs, they kind of know some of them already. Um, and so we, we, have, uh, we have a writing team um, led by Katie Gardner. And so she uh, and the other writers, uh, which, which I sort of refer to it as her biblical set, there's Mike, Luke, and Jack. Um, and they, uh, they basically did research into the different bosses to figure out, you know, what, what personal stories might they have? Because people really want to get to know them. Um, and so, so those stories give you background on the players, and, or sorry, background on the bosses. And the more you play, the more you get to understand how you can even see in some cases how one is seeing something from a different, the same thing from a different angle. Uh, and so there's sort of this, you know, meta story overall. Um, but it was, I mean, it was, a, it was, you know, it was a team of four writers working on it. So, uh, you know, it was a substantial portion of the design. And, the players really seem to like the different stories that, that the bosses have. And of course, no boss ever does it alone. You got to have your staff there, and you have a lot of characters throughout this game that you can sort of enlist to your mob. Um, and I think one of the most interesting things about the henchmen in this game is that they kind of have their own stories and they also have their own interests, disinterests, and hatreds. Yeah. Like, I, w I was surprised to find that the like. These characters range from like just straight up thugs to professional hitmen. And yeah. like the two that are sitting at the top are of course directly in rivalry with one another and won't work of course with the they other. Are, right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and so like I, I, I do wanna ask, like the uh, the characters, like how, how what after putting so much effort into the bosses, like how how did that process sort of extend to making these henchmen all individualized and sort of like this this web of stories with each other uh just it, it happened that also happened we knew we wanted to have a good collection of gangsters for the players to hire and it makes sense that these aren't i mean you're hiring criminals to to go help you you know well to go help you be a better criminal who else are you going to hire right but the when they are sending um when we were looking at how we wanted them to, how we wanted them to be, we, we also knew that we wanted players to get attached to these characters. Like, funny, like, one I didn't expect, actually, is a lot of people really like Grover, right? Like, people get attached to Grover. We've heard people, like, people have posted about writing a ballad of Grover monks. I am incredibly attached to Maria. She's in every single crew, and unless something unfortunate happens to Maria, she will go with me all the way to the end. Um, 
but we wanted to make sure that they felt real as well. Like there's not going to be a quiz. You don't have to answer questions about them, but if you get interested in their background, it's there. And then also because they're criminals, they've got issues. Like they, they didn't show up with an empty closet, right? So um, sometimes, you know, there's the skeletons are in the closet and, and the player has to deal with those. And depending on how the player deals with them, things can go well or not so well. And I also liked, um, I liked the idea if that they spent time together, there's a possibility that they could, you know, fall in love or like one another or develop pretty severe hatreds. But I love, I love that what, how I'm playing the game can affect this entire web of gangsters and what happens with them. Like it makes the world feel alive to me. And like, it's worth noting, like your, your, your rival bosses can also hire some of these gangsters. Yeah. Um, no, it's, it's just, I'm shaking my head, not because I think that's a bad idea, but because, like, especially the more you get to know the gangsters, like, there's sometimes you're just like, oh, God, no. Like, the person you definitely do not want to see on somebody else's squad is on somebody mm -hmm. else's squad, and yeah. now it's your problem. And if for some reason, which, of course, you, I feel like this happens to me all the time, I'm about to go take out somebody's safe house, and I discover that the person that I really value in my crew is best friends with somebody who's inside. Right, so so it, it leads to some some painful decisions, I guess, is what it leads to. But yeah, for those who don't know, like there is like one of one of the reasons you might have for pursuing a, a particular henchman is because they're they're good buddies with like someone to, that's higher up the black book, that's harder to hire. Mm -hmm. And uh, like, man, it is it is so disheartening when you take a look in the black book, you have the money for it, and you realize that that particular one oh you've God. been shooting for has been sniped by another gang leader. Yeah, I mean, look at, I totally agree. I totally agree. And it's, you know, it's, it also, it makes me think about like, how am I going to get that person? How am I going to get that person more quickly? Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's, you know, there's other bosses and they're, you know, they're free agent criminals. And like, I, I do, uh, I do want to ask like this, d did multiplayer ever come up in the conversation? This feels like from the beginning, this would have been very hard to implement because of the, you know, you have the pause button, you have the stop and go between real time turn based action and uh, and like in combat taking the time to plan your turns. So is there even like did the team ever look into any way to implement a way to play with other players? I can tell you that it it in almost every conversation like with with gamers, um, you know, I'll see people like what about multiplayer? What about multiplayer? But the game was always designed to be single player. Uh, always designed to be a single player experience right from the beginning. Fair enough. Um, so I do want to ask, like, now that the game is out, like, where do you go from here? Do you, do you have, are there any plans to like follow up with DLC for Empire of Sin? Does, does the team want to explore further gangsters, explore further stories, further opportunities with like henchmen or just bosses? Uh, there's, there is D, there, there, there is DLC planned. Absolutely. I, obviously, I can't say anything more on that. Um, there is DLC planned, and I think the thing about it is there's, there's so many different things that we can do, and we've already received loads of suggestions from players. You know, feedback about things they really like and would like to see more of. Feedback about things that they're like, can you please like look at that? Um, you know, and we're we absolutely value everything that the community has to say. You know, I've been in the forums myself answering questions. So, um, so yeah, we suffice to say that DLC is planned, and you know, we have lots of uh, lots of things that we're looking forward to to bring to Empire in. Awesome. Um... And then, of course, like in addition to like the the henchmen, in addition to the bosses, you have a you have a lot of small factions, and you have a lot of like side quests that sort of randomly pop up throughout the city depending on where you are. I thought it was interesting that like I would see certain different quests appear depending on what district I started in or where mm -hmm. I went to. Um, what was the process that went into the sort of designing these randomly appearing stories and how they and how they appear and like what's entailed in them uh well there's there are lots of different things that can cause one i guess just speaking like from a game design point of view 
there's lots of different things that can cause one of those to fire off. You know, you're in a specific location. It, it happens to be around this specific time. You have this gangster employed. Something, all missions have, all, especially the those different events, they have precursors that say these things need to have happened before this will fire off. So what we wanted to have was not just something that's like, everything blew up and you're, you know, you're done. But, but have them be sort of choice points, like you can do this or you can do that. And whatever your choice is going to be is going to affect your game in one way or another. So we wanted to make them meaningful to gameplay. Um, and also it provides variety to the player's play experience. There's a, sure. that, and it, it, it also like, you know, the game certainly has a pretty heavy RPG component, you know, so that the building of your characters, the building of your boss, you know, the building of, um, I guess the whole gang that you had, your crew that you end up having, all of that, you know, goes toward the, the RPG pillar of the game. Mm -hmm. And sort of speaking of which, like, it, I think it's really interesting. I think the, the sit, the sit down meeting thing was a very interesting part of the game to me because like every single gang leader has very different reactions to, in their conversations with another gang leader. Like Elvira meeting with uh, Mabel the first time would be very, very different in the, converse, in the conversation that's had compared to like sitting down with Capone for the first time. And uh, I know like a lot that history, like I know a lot of that history probably went into that, but like how did it, what was the approach to like capturing the ex exact personality for characters that like, A, the character is based on history and B, like the fictional ones that, that y'all came up with? Well, the, the, the writing team, they knew those characters. They knew how they would respond. And so they spent a lot of time fleshing out those characters, just even the background of those characters so that they knew how they would respond to any given event whether or not it was actually scripted at this point in time. So to them, Mabel Riley is absolutely a personality. And if I said, how would Mabel Riley, how would she feel about, you know, going out if somebody called her up at two o'clock in the morning and said, let's go do this thing. How would she feel about that? They would have a response for that because they know her personality because they've created her. So they spent a lot of time building up. And I mean, this is common, I would say, to any writing team on any game or actually on pretty much anything else. Um, that they would spend a lot of time building the characters so that they knew them, so that they would know how to respond. But you're totally right, like the, the way that um, it, it's not just purely rote, you know, the, that it's not like everybody's going to respond to Capone the same way. Different people have different opinions. Like Frank Reagan is just, my God, you know, I'd hate to be across the table from him, but I love playing him. Greg, do you have any questions in particular? So like I I want uh, Brenda, can you kind of elaborate like what it's been uh, what it's been like after release? Because I mean I think there's a misconception that people think you immediately work on DLC or you immediately move on to the next project. But I think there's a lot more support and information that comes from that than just like oh we get a break now that the game's out. I think you actually work harder after the game releases. It, well, it depends, right? I mean you're working just as hard, but you're working on different things, right? Um, because because any game. You know, any game launch, there's there's always going to be some issues, you know, that crop up, and there's always ways that you want to um, improve the game, right? So that, you know, for me, my focus usually changes from well, it's it's our game and we're working on it to now it's actually not our game. It's the game is in the hands of players, and now it is the players' game. So you know, we're always working to improve the game. You know, if issues comes up, come up, we're deploying patches, and you know, I'd say over the coming weeks and months. You know, that's something that we are going to continue to do. Um, and eventually we, you know, we move into DLC and whatnot. But yeah, it's really busy. Like I, I'm, I'm not kidding what I'm saying. I'm in those forums reading what people are saying, you know, and, and taking players feedback. Because players have a lot of great ideas. And if there's some things like, like there's no designer in this world that's perfect. Um, you know, so some people are going to say like, no, this just didn't work for me. So that's, you know, that's stuff that we take on board. Like, obviously, um, you know, especially when it comes to fans, like Paradox fans, they know their stuff and they know the type of games that they want. So, yeah, so we're, it, you move into sort of feedback mode and what do you do with all that feedback and what decisions do you make based on all that? I think yeah, you don't, you don't kick back and go on vacation. Yeah, no. you can't, you can't. It's like, no. an, you absolutely cannot. <laughs> no, no, not at all. Well, that brings up everything. an interesting 
Well, actually, I think that brings up an interesting point, though, as far as, like, how the design team approaches a particular thing. You know, like, this is a game based on criminals. This is a game based on, on people that did some very dastardly things. And uh, that does bring up a matter of, like, you know, like, this was a time when uh, the Chicago race riots were happening, which is... Uh, Reagan's Colts were largely considered to be hugely responsible for mm -hmm. and that brings up the matter of like racism xenophobia in addition to like the criminal element like how did the team decide on how far they were going to go on some of those more explicit things versus where they would sort of pull back a bit well I mean that you know that actually so this is a discussion that we had I mean you know for me um when I go to, when I'm playing a game like and you're right about you're you're right you're certainly right it was you know 1920s wasn't exactly um, it, it, it's not going to win any awards for diversity and and that sort of stuff right um, but I decided you know when people are playing a game they're not coming to a game to be reminded of that and I've made historical board games which are all about ex just that in fact um, so we decided that if, if you're playing a game, we want you to enjoy your experience, who you are, you know, without coming across, without coming across things that you've, you've not wanted to play this game to find. Um, and so, uh, so I wasn't interested in, you know, I remember if we go way back into the early days of RPGs, for instance, when female characters used to have, um, you know, less strength than male characters and, and more charisma or something like that to compensate. Um, I just decided, like, in fact, there's not even any gender, you know, you'll notice none of the gangsters actually even have a gender listed next to them. It's just, what do we, what do we have to have? Um, and I just didn't want to include all that stuff, um, just because I don't want to ruin people's gameplay experience. For sure. And it's not like Frank Reagan comes across as a nice guy in any way, but like... <laughs> he doesn't come across as a nice guy, no, in any way, at all, at all, in, in, no, he doesn't come across as a nice guy. At um, one point in time, we, you know, we could have considered, like, let's add all this stuff in there, but who wants to bring 1920s garbage, you know, into 2020? 2020's been bad enough. <laughs> Just leave that all back there. And, um, I do gotta ask, with the, with the connection to, uh, this was uh, under Paradox Interactive, which they are quite thoroughly good at what they do when it comes to strategy and a lot of other styles. What has it been like to work with them uh, as far as like the, the development and rollout of Empire Sim? I, well, I've said this before. I've said this to their face. I've said it behind their back. I really, really have liked working with Paradox. They, they're a publisher, but they feel a lot more like a developer to me. And you sort of what you said, you know, they know their stuff. They know, they know their players. I would argue that they know their players better than anybody else knows their players. Um, they have been incredibly supportive, uh, you know, going all the way up to release, you know, the things that we needed to do for the game, giving us lots of access to UR tests. Um, they've been fantastic. I don't really have any complaints. Um, and, you know, obviously we're just post launch, so it feels like there's 3 million things going on, uh, you know, but things have been fine. Like we're, you know, we're making sure we're getting all the feedback and, you know, we've gotten a, a, a couple updates out to address some issues. So. Um, yeah, so it's, you know, it's continued to be great. Awesome. And um, in closing, I would like to ask, is there anything in particular that you want to rep for Empire of Sin? Is there anything that uh, you'd like people, like direction you'd like to give people as to where to check out more, where to see, or uh, where can people expect to see what's coming next with uh, uh, Romero Games and uh, Paradox Interactive? I would say, well, so there's the, the um, I just go to the forums like the Par paradox is great forums not just for empire of sin but for all their games so um you know that's where players are providing feedback they're asking questions um uh so that well there's that there's a discord um also an active twitter account so any of those places we will see the feedback and if people want to make sure they hear um you know the, if they want to be the first to hear about the new dlc sign up for the mailing list because i'm sure it's all gonna get sent to everybody Awesome. And uh, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us. Thank you for uh, sharing this game with us. Uh, it has been a wonderful experience to play through this. I, uh, I am a huge history buff. I love the untouchables and, and a lot of stuff like that. Um, that was one so of the inspirations, is... probably, probably pretty obvious, but yeah, that was one of the inspirations. <laughs>
so this has been a pure delight to play. Uh, people can find this game on PC, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and Nintendo Switch. That's right, yeah. And it's PC and Mac. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much. And I Thank think you. that will cover it. This has been All TJ right. Denser, news editor with Shack News, Greg Burke, uh, video editor with Shack News. We are signing off. Thank you so much. Thank you.